Hi all, hope you all are doing good. So this is the first video in the series of report development. Uh, in, in this series we'll discuss how we can develop uh, our DLC reports. I'll try to cover um, uh, most of the things which I know as a developer. If this is something uh, that you find interesting, then please subscribe to the channel so that uh, you get updates when a new video is released. In today's video, we'll discuss about uh, the basics, which is uh, what is a report and what are the different components involved in the report and uh, 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 what is a visual part or what is a RDLC designer and what's there in the developer environment. So for the demo, I'm using uh, Microsoft Dynamics NEV 2016. Uh, the steps which we will discuss during this video series will uh, remain same uh, for if you are planning to develop a report for NAB 2013 R2 or 2015. Most of the part which we will discuss can be applied to NAB 2013 uh, with slight uh, changes with slight changes because there are enhancement happening with the product and the reports are being uh, pretty easy and consistent from to consistent from 2013 R2 onwards. So I'll, I'll try to cover all those areas where you need to change if you are planning for NAV 2013. So let's start. In this video we'll cover what are the prerequisites for the report development, uh, why we need a report and what are the different type of reports, uh, what are the report triggers and, uh, and just an introduction to the RDLC component. What are the different uh, components available over here and we'll see users as we go forward. So let's talk about the prerequisite. Yes, we need uh, Dynamics Snap 2013 or higher installed uh, with a valid license permission for report development. Um, as far as the Visual Studio or the layout part is considered, uh, for NAV 2013, you need to have Visual Studio if you want to design a report which have a printable output. Uh, but uh, from 2013 R2 onwards, uh, a report builder has been added uh, which can be used for development of the reports and the tool automatic is a part of the product DVD and get installed on your system automatically when you install Dynamics Snap. I personally prefer to use a uh, report builder and the only reason is that uh, I might have to develop reports let's say from 2013 to uh, R2 to 2016 and uh, instead of keeping multiple versions of Visual Studio, I prefer to use Report Builder. Uh, let's talk about why we need reports. Uh, so just to a brief idea about it, let's say um, it printed the summarized information uh, for the better understanding of the user who uh, is looking for a certain type of information from the database because database has uh, so many tables and so many data into multiple tables yes there is linking but that cannot be seen by the user uh, a end user needs it uh, detail in a consolidated format that he can use uh, for his business requirement and there can be uh, there are so many reports in the standard product also in the report we can use uh, calculations and expressions so let's say um, I'm you know getting some records from some table and some records from some tables and if I want to do some calculation I can do it through the reports uh, these are majorly also used for printing documents let's say uh, the documents which are going outside uh, to the company let's say sales invoices in the shipments or other types of uh, uh, documents which are required for the business so what are the different type of reports that we have in Navigen uh, just to uh, briefly describe it there are two types of report that are available one is which have the printable output that can be seen by the user and the other one are the non printable reports which are actually the uh, actually used for the recurring task such as uh, let's say updating uh, the uh, 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 prices of the items and there's a standard report in Microsoft Dynamics Snap which is uh, adjust item cost price so what that report does it it adjusts the cost and items mm, uh, adjusts the cost and prices for the items and it doesn't give you an output it does the processing at the background so we can uh, bifurcate them into two areas one is a printable and another one is a non-printable and the non-printable reports are called as processing only reports 
uh, a report actually include the two parts uh, one is the logical part where you actually uh, decide what tables you want uh, what fields from the tables you want and uh, the another one is the visual part how you want to show it to your user so the logical part is uh, actually developed inside Navigen whereas the visual part is developed either on Visual Studio or on the report builder and uh, this is how uh, uh, and this is the extract from Microsoft training document uh, which uh, tells you everything about report uh, you have in the report description you can have uh, report properties a report can have one or more data items or I would say zero or more data items uh, each report ha will have its own triggers and then each data item which you add uh, and data item you can uh, take it as tables in Navigen each data item will have its own properties its own triggers and you can have uh, columns for that particular data item which is uh, field from the table then you have labels which are used somewhere we'll see how they how we can use it then there is a request page uh, which is actually for the user who want to filter the report data based on his requirement at that particular moment of time and the request page again have properties triggers and controls now controls again have uh, properties and triggers and then there is the RDLC data which is the visual representation which we discussed so uh, let's go briefly in this particular in the first day on the report designer and have a look what we talked about so let's see it's uh, let's have a look on the 301 uh, vendor list report so as the name suggests it will give you a list of vendors which are there in your system with certain tweakings and all so like as you can see the in the data type you have two options mm, one is the uh, data type is type of data item which is table and then one is the column which can be a field from the table from the same table which you are adding it on the top or it can be a variable which you define under uh, you know cal globals you ca it can be a variable or it can be a text constant which you have defined somewhere or it can be an expression like this that you say that uh, x field plus y field and uh, with this semicolons and all so that is how a column can be defined and you can have a number of uh, data items in the report so you I can add uh, let's say I can add one more data item let's say vendor ledger entry and in the same way you can add or I can have the same data item multiple times right now these columns are uh, uh, indented to this data item if you can see uh, this is as, uh, at particular indentation level 1 which is whereas it is at level 0 so this define the relationship between uh, these columns and this table so that is how system identifies that this is these fields are either from the vendor or uh, uh, you know like this one is a, uh, is from the vendor table and because it is indented under the vendor let's have a look on the triggers which you are talking about so let's uh, first go with the properties so if you want to see any report properties you need to go to the last row which is a blank row and then from here from the menu you can uh, the shortcut is shift F4 you can click and see the properties of the report so these are the report properties in the same way you have a data item so you have data item properties which we seen uh, here so these are my data item properties and then each data item uh, as we see can have multiple column and then column has its own properties for the labels you can go to the view menu and you'll see labels uh, where you can say a name and a caption we'll see how to use them for the request page if you want to have one in your report you can go to the view menu and say uh, request page and then you can ha this report does not have a request page but you can have it here I'll show you on a separate report maybe let's see uh, okay this should have a request page so this is the request page kind of thing and each request page uh, will again have its own properties which is again from the uh, blank uh, row in the request page and this uh, a request page can control can contain controls like these and each control will again have properties if you have so many items on the request page you can group them like uh, it is done here 
and then they'll be shown as a separate group to the user now let's talk about the triggers uh, if I go to this report if I navigate to the cal code which is F9 is a shortcut or here should be one button yeah this one so if I go on the top I can see documentation that's a static one and applies to every object in Navigen but these are my report trigger which is on init on pre report and on post report and these three are for my data item so if uh, I have multiple data items in the report I'll find uh, uh, three uh, more triggers for that particular data item so it's uh, one data item you can have uh, you'll have three triggers uh, just to understand uh, what are these triggers let's create a report and see how we can kind of use it and let's do it on a small table let's say which have less data so let's say salesperson purchaser so I should have one uh, uh, trig uh, three triggers for salesperson and three for the report so the first trigger which is on pre data item for the uh, uh, for the data item is actually called or executed uh, when you run the report before the data is get loaded into the report or when the report started executing uh, this trigger is commonly used for filtering if you want to filter some records uh, for this table based on some uh, maybe uh, fixed things or maybe something which user input on the request page you can do it here and then this one which is the post data item is executed when everything is over for that particular data item whereas this one is executed uh, n number of times where n is number of records in my that particular table so let's say just to give you uh, understand this I'll put a message uh, uh, on after get record with a let's say percentage one where I say uh, salesperson purchaser dot let's say name okay and I'll put the same message over here and I'll just change it to on pre just to understand how it is on uh, pre data item okay and this one is on post data item and this is actually uh, we should know it uh, before we start developing that which one is executed one when and how many times it executed so this one is on init and this one is kind of on post on pre and this one is on post so what will happen is when I run this report is my init will be called and I'll get a message like on init then my pre report will be called and then hold on for this one my data item triggers will be executed in the same order uh, this one will execute number of times the record uh, the system have records for and then the post data item of that particular uh, uh, data item will be executed once everything is over in the report uh, the system will call my on post report so this one will be executed at the kind of end of the report so let's have a look I'll kind of save it as 50,000 and test okay and uh, let's run it 50,000 okay so if I run it I get a message which is on in it okay which is actually what I have written on the on in it trigger and let's see what else I started getting so the second that is actually being called before my request page so this is my request page was loaded okay so before even your rec uh, request page is loaded your init trigger is being fired when I kind of preview it I get uh, on pre again and on pre data item which was here and you can see there was no value for the salesperson name because right now the record has not been loaded but I, if I go to on after get record which was this one this should repeat on after get record based on how many salesperson are there in the database so the first one is uh, someone hill then there's brad and then you keep on getting this based on number of records your table have and then you get on post sorry I was a bit fast on that 
and once that is done you get a on post at the end so that is how these triggers execute uh, on uh, when you run a report and just to add my, I know I cannot clear in them in one go now so I kind of clear them okay so I hope this will help you to understand how these triggers being executed the execution level at least now I can add columns right so I can go to uh, this action which is field menu and select all the columns which are available for this table in this uh, all the fields which are available in this table I can select outside and it automatically adds them okay. so these are being added those fields have been added and let's save it now let's have a look or have a view on what our uh, RDLC layout contain so I'm using uh, report builder so I can go to the view and then select the layout option from here once I do that my report builder will start so those who are coming from 2009 just to uh, be clear when you load your report you get a by default a body section loaded uh, you can have a page header and a page footer if you want but that is the only thing that you have you cannot have multiple bodies you cannot have multiple headers or footers that you used to have till 2009 so you can have only one header one body and one footer now inside these three sections uh, the two sections kind of behave same which is the header and the footer part whereas the body behaves a bit different we'll see how uh, talking about the components uh, let's see in the body I can have so many components as you can see text box line table and so on whereas in header and footer the list get is a bit small uh, it only support to use text box line rectangle or a image and we'll be using most of them so uh, in the f uh, future videos now coming uh, towards this side which is the report data there are some built-in fields uh, we'll see what they are uh, then there is a parameter section, a image section and the data source is actually from your Navigin uh, source and the data set will actually contain all the fields which you have added so as I added the four fields over here I can see all them here uh, with the name which I specified here so if you change it here that actually reflect here so anything which you do uh, before going to the Visual Studio you can change it here and then uh, don't do it after because once you assign it to some control uh, and then you change it then it creates some issues so w if you want to rename them do them before starting your development so these are my uh, fields which I added and I can see them here uh, now each section have its own properties which you can see on the right hand side and if I add a control let's say if I add a text box then my control also have some properties which are also available here and we'll see them all uh, once we start developing of the report and uh, with each report we add some new controls and we see how to use them so that's all for the today uh, which is which was the introduction session uh, in the next video we'll see how we can develop a simple list report in from Microsoft Dynamics Nav and what all we need to take care when we develop a list report stay tuned for more uh, your suggestions are most welcome please put them on the comments in the video and thank you thank you for today and see you next time